Um, so you heard us talk a little bit about native yesterday um, from like a partner approach. Today, uh, you'll hear us talk a lot more about what's the iProspect approach? What are the next steps? What are the brand benefits? Um, so hopefully all of you guys will be running out of this room ready to launch native. <laughs> um, and I'm Eleanor Smith. I'm the regional director of display for the East Coast. Um, so we're actually going to get started a little bit differently. We're gonna start with our activity, which I think you guys probably had an activity in the last uh, lab. So ours is the best. Um, <laughs> but if, you, if I can get a volunteer um, from the group, no willing Erica. volunteers. Oh, Erica. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I think what we want to do is if you can come forward. Sure. Nice. We forgot to erase it, but yes, that's fine. Sorry. Just, we, uh, we're you gonna, actually get an advantage because we didn't erase advantage. our board. So we're going to play Spot the Native Ad. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, it's not like Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> um, uh, so you're going to look at this page, actually, if you want to walk over there and grab a marker. Um, so I'm going to give you five seconds. Uh, there are more than two ads. So and there are the more than two ads. Find, You've already so have, have a competitive advantage. Sure. <laughs> two are circled. Sure. Um, everybody else in the audience can look at the page. But I'm going to give you five seconds to try and spot the Native Ad. So ready? Go. Okay, here we go. Time's, time's up. up, time's up, time's up. All right, you nailed it. Thank you. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely crushed it. Um, all right, so this thank is you. pretty. You can take a seat. Thank you. That was all we needed from you. Now we're not going to reveal the answers just yet, but yes, round of applause for our participant. <laughs> Um, so we're not going to go through the answers just yet. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about native first, uh, but then we don't worry. We won't hold you in suspense too long. We'll absolutely talk about what the native ads are. Awesome. So thank you. It's beautiful. Um, so native. Um, really, if you think about it, native was born out of the evolving and changing consumer behavior. It was something we talked a lot about yesterday. We heard about the rapid rate of change, and um, as a result, advertising is always having to evolve, right? So. There's a couple of things that we believe have really led to native. Um, so one, the rapid rate um, that we are in, that we are consuming content. So um, we're seeing that actually people are consuming like three, four, five bits of content at the same time, which absolutely blows my mind. Um, but not only are we um, consuming more content, we're producing more content, right? The other one is this idea of generational change. Um, so as generations are becoming more connected, you know, how a baby boomer wants to interact with content in your brands is very different than how a millennial does, right? So this is idea of um, notable separation there. And then we're dealing with a very vocal audience. Um, I guess it really all started with social, right? Um, but we're seeing it in all of our channels that people are telling brands what they think about them, what they want, what they expect. Um, we pretty much say it how it is all the time on the internet. And so advertising has to evolve to meet these needs. Um, so the first one is this idea of new ad formats. Um, think about mobile, right? We're all very connected to our mobile phones. When that came out, you know, there were several different, different types of ad formats that had to be released. Um, but now within content, there's all different ways that we need to get in front of a consumer and can integrate our message um, with these new forms of media. Um, the next way that advertising is evolving is snackable content. So if you think about it, you know, when we're consuming so many types of content, we are multitasking, right? So we're, we're needing lit little bits of content to decide if we're gonna engage further, right? So think headlines, think in feed. It's taking long form content and creating snackable um, bits of it via a headline or even a thumbnail image that's really telling the story that, that you're about to um, get into more in your content. And then there's this need for personalization. You know, we have this generational change. We have this vocal audience. We are connected to more devices. And so what's happened is we've trained consumers to expect personalization, to expect relevancy, and expect, expect really a custom experience. And so when you think about all of these things, the ways that consumer behavior is changing, and you think about how advertising is evolving, you know, we really think that Native is sitting in the middle of that. Native is sitting right in between a consumer and an advertiser as it's sitting in between content that they are already actively choosing to interact with. So taking a little bit of a step back and talking about how Native is defined, um, you saw Leo uh, from Yahoo talk about this yesterday, but Native's definition could not be simpler. It is when an ad is taking on the form and function of the experience um, that a user is engaging with. So when we think about this, we think of form and function, you can imagine there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different ways that this could look, right? But when you really think about this, native isn't new, okay? So take search, for example. When 
Google launched search in 2000, they said, okay, you know, this is where users are going to get their information. We're gonna stick a paid ad right at the top and we're not gonna make it special at all. It's gonna look exactly like it, but we're gonna like, you know, charge everyone tons of money to do this. So it was a form and function of what they were already doing and what was already working and what consumers wanted out of brands. The second one is social, right? Um, social ads are just how you, know, you would see your friend's content. And actually what I love about social, um, and, and Brittany might have already told you guys this before, but um, we were sitting in meetings with their leadership years ago, five, six years ago, um, and they said, oh, there's no place for brands in feed. That is far too personal. Fast forward and that's like where all of our ads are, right? <laughs> but it's because that's where users were experiencing content and they were going to get content. They were going to learn about their friends, brands, so it just made sense. And then another way that you know, Native has been around is forever is this idea of um, custom publisher content. So we've been doing this for years, right? Where we work with a publisher, we align with their message, we go to, to brands where we know our audience finds a lot of credibility and we sponsor content with them. But even take this back to like 1700s, I think is when the first um, newspaper ad was released. And it was a native ad in a newspaper. It was someone was writing an article and uh, a brand integrated with that content. And they were actually trying to find employees. So it's the same idea, right? Native form and function isn't a new concept, but we're seeing it evolve. Um, you know, with these things that we've talked about historically, you know, either the scale is limited or it's very specific to one publisher, right? And it looks one way. And um, with the evolution of programmatic native and some of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit more in terms of targeting, we're seeing it evolve. So it doesn't look the same. You know, the yahoos of the world are taking things like infeed and discovery and, and adding it to their homepage. You know, this is a, a technology website that this ad actually, or this page actually has like five different ads, three of which I've highlighted. But they're saying, you know, this is how our users in the tech space are engaging with our content. So this is where we're going to put content that we think that they would like from a brand. The same is true for ESPN. So we're going to come back to your exercise. I know you were all anxiously awaiting the results. Um, so when we actually look at the page, um, I don't know how many of you um, were able to see this. Erica, I think, might have been a little overzealous in her <laughs> circling. But, um, but you did actually spot uh, maybe one of the ads, or maybe not. And I think actually that's an interesting, interesting um, that some of the content that you circled is actually the publisher content versus uh, where we're actually seeing the advertisement, as you can tell, really integrates very seamlessly with what a publisher has um, and then what's amplified through native. Um, as some of the pieces uh, that we know are really important for native and kind of some of the primary benefits is just that. Um, this is a new channel, this is a new distribution of content, new amplification of content where it is really paramount um, that we have flexible placements um, so that we're using a, an advertiser's headline, a logo, a thumbnail image, uh, description, destination URL, and we're taking all of those components and we're really customizing it to the form and function of a publisher. Um, and that's really what you can see here, is that it's important for us to have that flexibility uh, with all those variables so we can take, make multiple different combinations to fit the publisher's site. Um, but beyond just, you know, the uh, think the flexibility of the placements, one of the things we're seeing is really coming out of that is um, some three key types of placements. So first and foremost is that content discovery. As you saw on that time page, um, there were multiple different articles um, that were referring to Time's own original content, but then there were a lot of other um, paid placements that were referring to an advertiser's own content, which um, is absolutely that content discovery. We can see it within an image widget form, or we can see it within that headline format. Um, as you heard yesterday from Leo, uh, mobile is absolutely on the rise and we think about how, how users and consumers are absorbing content and we need to make sure that we have a placement that fits that. So an in-feed ad unit for native is going to be really powerful. Um, and then finally, we can't ignore the scale um, that we can get with some in-ad placements. So in-ad placements are essentially taking um, your standard display ad sizes, that almost 300 by 250, but actually putting native thumbnails and headlines within those ads so that we are getting the scale of um, some traditional display ad sizes, but we're also catching the attention and integrating a little bit more seamlessly with publisher content. So the flexible placements are great, right? Um, but we don't want to just scale and not have any definition of who we're actually talking to. And as we've talked about 
um, in display, and we talk about it in real-time bidding and programmatic a lot, is the importance of making sure we're targeting the right customer. Um, and that is no different in native and really important that we're using all different sources of data, third party, second party, first party, um, in order to refine who you're actually talking to. So the brilliance about native um, is that we can use a customer's purchase data, whether they're in your CRM files, what their devices, their location, time of day, social interactions, um, and even most importantly, what content they're reading, and build campaigns that target those specific users based on all of those um, declared intent signals. And then finally, um, as you've probably heard us talk about with many of our other channels, um, it's great to have the flexibility and the scale of the placements and it's really good to have the targeting, but it's kind of nothing unless you can actually build campaign structures that take advantage of those two in the right way. Um, so we have a team that's very well versed in all the different native platforms that are out there and know how to have these very granular and rigor rigorous campaign structures in order to have the right targeting. Um, we've worked with multiple of these partners um, and all of them have different solutions and it's important for our team to understand what those different solutions are and how to build the right campaign structures for your campaigns. And it has absolutely has cross-channel benefits, um, which I think is really important to call out. Uh, when we actually look at some of the more kind of traditional native advertising and doing that direct to publisher content, uh, one of the things that we're finding is so interesting is that when we, um, when we are surrounding that content with branded banner, we're, we're actually seeing a 2x lift, a 2x percent um, CTR on those branded banners versus if we were just doing a homepage takeover or a roadblock. Um, on a sponsorship. So I think that's absolutely really important when you think about utilizing even the more traditional kind of custom native content. Um, second, and you actually heard this from Leo yesterday, he stole our thunder a little bit, but um, uh, so Yahoo actually did a test where they took one campaign and they um, had search, a branded search and native. Um, and they looked at the branded search query volume for their search campaigns and then they had another campaign that was just their standard brand search campaign. Um, and when you actually looked at the combination of native with search, they had 204% increase in their branded search queries. So they're absolutely increasing. That's 3.6 <coughs> times what they would have had without the native content. So they're absolutely increasing what that um, search branded query volume is. And then finally, where we've actually used native a lot, um, which I think is really important, is how do we start to use native to drive engagement, drive traffic, so that we're fueling some of those bottom of the funnel, um, low funnel conversion tactics. Um, so when we've actually used native to um, drive site traffic, we've seen an 83% increase in site traffic by using native campaigns, um, so that we are really filling the funnel and really promoting people to consider your brand and then purchase later on. And user response is positive. So beyond the engagement, um, one of the things I think that's really interesting for us is that um, it's important to have strong user response. So um, the first thing that we're actually seeing is that uh, Yahoo looked at what top of mind they took a thousand, they took a campaign um, for a travel um, client and uh, they looked to actually see what the brand lift was on it. And there was a 114% increase in top of mind awareness, but actually also a 2x um, lift in brand recall a few months after the campaign. So people are not only um, have a stronger awareness from your brand with these native advertisements during the campaign, but also after. Um, secondly, we actually wanted to compare what native looks like versus kind of original publisher content. And when we look at the two side by side, users are actually seeing native content the same amount of time as they are seeing publisher original content. It's about 26% of the time they're seeing native content versus publisher original content, which is about 24% of the time. But then, when you actually look at the time that they're spent um, looking and reading that content, um, they're spending about one second looking at native content versus 1.2 seconds reading original content. So that might seem like a low number, um, but it's not. If you remember what Leo said yesterday, people are consuming content in microseconds. They're reading headlines in literally instances. I gave you five seconds to look at the board. Um, that's probably more time than people spend on a home page. So uh, when you think about that statistic, it is really astounding how similar it is between native and original. And then finally, um, you know, we've talked about how vocal the audience is and we're actually seeing that in native it's helping that. Um, when we polled a, a user base um, to see, to ask the question, how likely would you be to share this advertisement, to share this content uh, with your friends and family, 32% um, responded that they were very interested in actually sharing, very likely to actually share that content with their friends and family, which is really astounding. You're not just getting good engagement with the campaigns, but really legs beyond it. So we've talked about a lot. Um, before we go any further, you know, 
we're looking at native and there's all these great benefits, right? It's evolving, there's flexible placements, there's endless targeting. And I think the best of all user response is really positive. But when we go to talk to brands and advertisers about it, you know, there's still um, some hesitations or some unfamiliarity um, or barriers to entry in really just jumping in um, and launching something. So definitely want to make sure that we're clear on a couple of those. So the first one that we hear a lot is, you know, I don't have the right content to promote or it's going to uh, cost a lot of money to produce or it's going to take a lot of time to produce. And um, what I absolutely want you to know is that you guys are sitting on a treasure trove of content, whether you think you are or not. The beauty of native is that we're taking content and we're not, you know, sending it to the masses. We're taking a piece of content that we believe is really relevant for a certain audience and focusing it in. Um, so if you think about how we um, look at content, you look in the you know, BOE um, sections, you know, owned content, you, you guys within your teams or your organization somewhere has created you know, blogs, videos, articles that you believe are producing a lot of value for your brand. Um, and so we can absolutely take those tomorrow and start amplifying that, right? Um, taking you know, that content and making sure that it's being amplified to the right audience. Um, one of my favorites is earned content. So um, we work with the best brands, right? There's no doubt about that. And so uh, you guys are getting great press. Um, your users are saying great things about you and we can actually take those things and amplify them to create more brand sentiment and positive views for others um, and point it to that um, positive content. So it's not even necessarily things that you within your organization have to create. Um, and then the last is, you know, something that we're all familiar with, this idea of paid content. So back to sponsored content, you know, with publishers, um, but even influencers, right? Influencer marketing is becoming bigger and bigger. Um, and so how do we partner with that type of content, amplify that, um, or even take things that people are already promoting and take it a step further or um, expand the lifetime of something, right? So content really shouldn't be something that is standing in your way. We can start something tomorrow and then work together with our content team and with our team to develop more content along the way. Um, but just know that you already have content um, that we can absolutely promote. Okay, that was the wrong button. Um, <laughs> the next barrier to entry is that it's difficult to measure or prove success or just really confused on how do we even measure this, right? So um, it's not a good presentation without a funnel, um, right? So. <laughs> Just like everything, you know, we have campaigns in market right now that are driving everything from awareness to sales um, and leads goals. Um, so that's not an issue across several KPIs, but where we're really seeing the value of native and we would, we would challenge you guys to, to think the same is this idea of engagement. So when your teams internally are producing content, you know, it is to create um, brand sentiment and it's to um, encourage the user to engage further with the brand and learn a little bit more about your brand. So if we think about this idea of engagement, you know, we're looking at things like click-through rate, time on site, scroll depth. What are they doing once they choose in a second to click through? How long are they staying there? And something that um, we're really proud of is, is Moat has um, released industry benchmarks, right? And with all of the campaigns that we are actively running, we are meeting, or excuse me, we're exceeding those ben uh, benchmarks by 30 to 75%. You're like, wow, that sounds like magic. Well, it kind of is, um, but it really goes back to this idea of you know, the full control that we have and the granularity and rigor that we have in our campaign setup and the way that we're targeting. We're managing these campaigns, targeting these campaigns and buying these campaigns like we do your search and display, right? We're optimizing regularly to make sure that they're driving results. So while these look great, you know, this is what you should expect from us. And a cool case study is one of our, um, our large healthcare brands came to us and said, okay, we're launching a new website. Um, no one knows anything about it. Um, we can't even retarget off of it because we have like three people that have been to our website, <laughs> right? It's like all the test people. Um, what can you do for us? And we said, native. Um, well, you guys have, you created great content for your new site. We can take that, customize it to all different types of audiences. Um, and as a result, we saw amazing engagement. So click through rate, you know, good number, um, time on site, they were spending over a minute with the content, which is great, but something that I'm really excited about is the 50% scroll depth. Um, and you say, that doesn't really seem like a lot, they only read half the content, but what I love about this is that they were already reading eight or 90 to 95% of the content when they got there. If we think about how our pages are built, the bottom, you know, 25 to 30%, is like contact us or you know more about them. So these people were reading almost 90% of the content on average and they were typically going two, three, four pages within the site to get more information. So really, really cool stuff, proves the value of reaching the right audience and amplifying the right content. 
So hopefully by this point you're all thinking native is amazing, but <laughs> my last barrier to entry is I'm so unsure where to begin. I have no idea where to start. Um, and we absolutely, we have a team um, that has experience with this, but more importantly than that, we have a process and we have an approach. Um, and as Aubrey said, I think the most important place for us to start is to understanding what kind of content you have, um, whether that be owned, curated, or do we need to identify content that's out there around your brand. Um, and then from that point, we can really go and define uh, what the campaign objectives are. But before we even get into what the complexity of the approach is, I think the important thing to remember here is that you do have iProspect, you do have a team that has experience in this. Lean on your client services team. Um, lean on us um, to help you navigate through um, not just the content journey, but also how do we amplify that and make the most for your campaign. So questions? I think we have two minutes for questions. So. Yeah. Yep. So right now it is absolutely working through our team because we have a team that um, is very comfortable doing this. You know, uh, I, we made that decision based on how it's bought on audiences, how it's bought in platforms that align really well with how we're already buying it. Um, but we'd be remiss if we didn't say we're working with the other teams to understand what the needs are because you know if we need to drive this value for search or you know this value for social, how we're recommending content and how we're recommending the audiences that we target is absolutely relative to the goals that the other um, channels are trying to drive. So we might be managing the buy, but the planning is absolutely being included, and that's why it's so important to um, loop in the client services team. Yeah, good, great question. Great question. Else. So I'm sure you'll even think of a thousand questions like I always do when I'm in this. Um, <laughs> we'll be around, obviously, until tomorrow. Um, let us know. I think you can even message us on the app if you think of something or, or pull us aside and we can answer any questions. So, Cool? Awesome. Thank you guys so much.